This is my studio and also the majority of my creative process takes place here. And I'm really lucky to be a part of this communal setting. Um, there's about 40 other clay artists here with me and we inspire each other and encourage one another and it's a really lovely environment. It's my, it's my haven. <laughs> so you leave everything else behind when you come in here. My name is Mario Gahara and I am a ceramic sculptor. You know, I don't think I have like a light bulb moment that I can think of exactly, but I can definitely say that I've met people through going to other studios, going to other countries, or going to other schools or, or whatnot. I've met people who have kind of validated the fact that art making is a really truly special thing and that I have this special calling and that you know it's really encouraging to meet other people who feel the same way mm -hmm. and um, and so and along the way I've always met people who have reignited that passion within me and so I think it's just people and I think those are the people that I've met along the way that have encouraged me to, to keep going. <laughs> I'm usually mostly working with my hands and then the rib to smooth. The butter knife I really use to really sculpt the shape. Um, I find that it's nice and stiff that I can really mold the piece. Now, <clears throat> in ceramics you can't have anything, this is completely solid clay, and with ceramics you can't build that way because clay always dries from the outside in, and so if the inside is, is solid clay, you're most likely going to get a piece that's going to explode in the kiln. Once I sculpt the outer form, just like you see me do here, what I do is I refine it and as time goes, the outside stiffens but the inside remains soft. And so eventually I'll slice into it and then scoop out with um, a loop tool such as this, hollow it out and then put it back together. So that's exactly how these were made. It's a very traditional technique that a lot of sculptors use. Your experiences in India of, of creating stone carvings of like Hindi goddesses and, and temple, mm -hmm. temple figures really comes into play when you're creating something. No, absolutely. I, you know, I, I always try to tap into serenity and just some of the, not only the sculptural beauty of the figure, but just the serenity and the, the visual rhythm and the just, I, I do tap into a lot of what I was seeing in the temples. You know, I think, I think with sculpture what makes pieces interesting is that tension. I think, I think if it's completely laying down, there's not that, that tension that needs to be there to make the piece interesting. You know, just like when you're reading a story, you have to have some sort of conflict within the story or else the story isn't a story. Right. And so I think the tension, I, I really like what you pointed out, how if it was the other way, it would be really overtly sexual, right. but it's kind of in between the two worlds. And I, I find a lot of religious iconography to be that way, even the Western iconography, like they look like they're in sexual ecstasy, but at the same time, they're supposed to be really chaste. So <laughs> I think it's it kind of, I was kind of, thinking that too, of how that tension is necessary in my work.